Making a mess. <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm going to make pastry, okay? This is a sweet pastry called Pat Sucre. Um, yes, something I can do for you? <laughs> um, <laughs> go on, shoot. Um, I've got plain flour here. So the way, to, way that I was trained was to do it on a surface. Okay. You can bung the whole lot into a Magimix food processor. Brilliant, does the job, no problem, very quickly. But a lot of people don't have those, so I wanted to show how to make this lovely sugar pastry on the board, how I, how I was trained to do it. Um, because this is great for any sweet tart. It's a really good pastry. It's a bit like my sour cream in the fact that it's like Play-Doh. You know, you can patch it and you can, you know, it won't go short. You can play with it quite a lot before it, it starts to sort of disintegrate and not be quite so good. So it's a really good pastry to start with. So, 100 grams of plain flour. You put it into a little circle like that onto your surface. And in the middle, you put some sugar. So none of it touches, okay? And in the sugar, make another little well, and you just put the butter around. Now just bear with me on this. I know it looks really peculiar, but this is how we did it. Did they not have magic mixes when you were training? Yeah, but they, we didn't use them very often. It's like when we made mayonnaise, we didn't use a, an electric whisk. We used a wooden spoon and we dripped the oil in with a fork. Because I suppose they wanted to teach you how to do it if you were in the middle of somewhere where they didn't have electricity. <laughs> I don't know. I think they just wanted to make us work for it. We did have them, but you didn't use them very often at all. The truth is they didn't have an electricity in those days, did they? <laughs> Everybody would have seen, just seen the oh abuse I have to live with. <laughs> right, I'm putting that in as well. Two eggs, okay. I'll keep those egg yolks. I'll probably make some meringue. Or I might make you um, an egg white omelette for lunch with nothing else in it. Just that. That'd be nice. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. So the egg yolks go into the middle of the sugar, you've got the butter surrounding and then you get your hands in and you start sort of squidging it all together, okay? Now, ideally, your butter's a bit softer than mine is, okay? So it might take a little bit more squidging. And also, just do it with one hand because you know that the phone is going to ring or the door is going to go. Well, maybe not so much now, the door, obviously, in lockdown, but certainly the phone might ring or your iPad might say somebody's phoning you on FaceTime. Anything like that could be happening, so you need a clean hand, all right? So just use the one hand to squidge these wet ingredients together in the middle, okay? Let's get that all together. Gather in the, the sugar. And once this is all squidged to a nice paste, then you start gathering in the flour. And then you mix it all together on the work surface, okay? so. This is how you make a pat sucre. This is the traditional way to do it. Just like when you're making short crust, you rub in the fat and the flour together initially in a bowl. But as I said, this can, you could literally whack all these ingredients together and give them a quick zap in a food processor. But I don't know, I think it's great fun to get your fingers all mucky again. And I actually think this is great for kids. This is a really good pastry to start for kids because generally people start kids off on short crust which when you roll it more than once, it goes really short. It ends up looking quite gray. I mean, if kids have you know, been doing commas where their hands have been anyway, but fat aside, um, this is a better pastry, I think, for them to start because they can get in and have some fun with this, draw in the flour, a bit like pasta making, you know? Get kids, kids love getting mucky fingers. And then they've got a pastry, which is a nice sweet pastry, but it's also a pastry that they can you know, play with and tastes much better in a jam tart as well than um, short crust pastry. Oh, I haven't told you what I'm making. I was going to say, so the pastry you're making, what's yeah. it going to be for? This is going to be for a bakewell tart. I've got a real thing about bakewell tart. I've really been fancying one. Um, but I'm going to make it slightly differently today. Start drawing in the flour. Your one-handed thing has gone right oh, out yes. the window. You see, that's what this was for. 
bear. Oh, even better. Do you know what I've got? My lovely friend, Emily, from Barefoot um, Cafe in Oxford. She's got two places in Oxford. It's an amazing bakery. She makes incredible cakes. She sent me this in the post, bless her heart, because she knew I didn't have one. So thank you, Emily. And I'm using it now just to gather in the flour. So you come back in just a second, sweetie, because this is going to take a little while. And um, I know that you're going to get irritated with me. Never. Ta-da! All done. Okay. Also, I want to say very much, thank you very much, Emily, for not only did you send me a dose scraper, you sent me some amazing brownies as well, which we've scoffed a lot of. Anyway, this is going to go be chilled now for more, at least half an hour, somewhere in, in some cling film, and then it'll be ready to roll out and line my lantern. You've been busy. <laughs> I have been busy. <laughs> Rolled it out, blind baked it. Now it's ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Now the thing about this pastry, because it's got sugar in it, it does catch, okay? So you have to be very careful. This is about as dark as you want it to go. So um, it's probably too dark already, and that's my fault. I just kept the, my eye off the ball. So what I might do, I'll have to see, is I'm gonna put the, the mixture in. If it starts to get a little bit too brown, I'll just put a little bit of foil just around the edges to protect the pastry. But that's a technical thing that I'll do in the background when the camera's off. As I'm praying that it will be okay. What have you got in the bowl? Um, I've got butter, sugar, and lemon zest in there. 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of sugar, and a whole lemon zest. One large egg going in. Okay. Plus a little bit of shell, there we go. Beat that in. Get it all nice in. Then I'm going to add to that 100 grams of ground almonds. Goes in. So you've got this lovely lemony, almondy mixture at the bottom. A little touch of the almond extract goes in as well. Just make it extra almondy. There we go. Put that together. Right, in here I've got some um, strawberry jam. We haven't got any raspberries. You've made do with what you've got at the moment. So we've got um, strawberry going in the bottom. A couple of tablespoons worth of that going in there. Spread that out. Traditionally, it should be raspberry, but hey de ho. Spread that around. Oh, do you like a baked well tart? I love like baked well tart. So comforting, isn't it? I just think we need a little bit of comfort at the moment, don't we? With all the nonsense that's going on outside. And in the various places of government. blind bake is so you don't get the soggy bottom that everyone um, knows and loves and it also just means that you get this lovely firm pastry base well, it's, it's the same as actually the soggy bottom thing um, and it'll just hold it and you'll get this lovely crisp base with this lovely soft pillowy um, frangy pan nice actually on the top so just spread that over I'm going to pop this back into the oven until it sets. Again, I don't know because oh, I haven't made this in ages. So, and I'm making it up as I'm going along this recipe. So, um, what I'll do is I'll let you know when it comes out how long it took, but it shouldn't be too long. And obviously, if I need to protect the um, pastry, I will. Okay, 180. Shove it in. Mm. It's out, it's cool, okay? Because I'm going to ice it next. So, just wanted to show you how these were just a little bit too dark. Do you remember around the edge? So, what I did was I put a little bit of foil all the way around and then cooked it like that so they didn't get much darker. I mean, they had caught a little bit. And then, of course, well, I knocked that. <laughs> so, I just stick that on there and pretend that it didn't fall off. I just let it fall off. Um, so this is all nicely cooked, springy there, perfect, lovely, all nice and cool. So we're going to make a really lovely, fresh icing to go on top. 
And this is literally fresh raspberries, which you puree. This is a great icing to put on fairy cakes as well. Um, you can do the same with passion fruit. Remember I did that with that coconut cake the other week. Um, I did a passion fruit drizzle. But, you know, raspberries, black currants, um, add icing sugar once you've pureed them, and they're just a really lovely way to make an icing. Naturally coloured, you've got that lovely fresh flavour of the fruit, much better than, you know, all those different dyes um, with all the various additives in it. This is purely natural. So I'm just going to add enough sugar to make this sort of sit really on top of the um, bake or tart. So you might want to come back because I'm just, you know, adding piles of sugar. Absolutely piles of it. I'd have to make lots of cakes and ice them with this. <laughs> so much raspberry puree. So anyway, just ignore that. I'm going to pour some on and then just smooth it over. Okay, I'm trying to do this all in one go. It all looks nice this way. Just keep them all the way around. Winnie, honestly, she's such a barky dog today. Okay. Now, do you know what some people are really saying is that there's no flaked almonds on top of this. Um, it's because we don't have any. And also, I'm covering it all in icing sugar anyway, but you could put some toasted flaked almonds on top of the, um, the icing if you wanted to. Um, but I'm not. I'm going to do something slightly different make it a bit more summery and i'll show you in just a second what we're going to do so just that's plenty so this will set up this icing okay it won't set solid but it'll certainly set up and then i'm just going to take some little baby strawberries we have because obviously there's strawberry jam in here so this is a little bit of a strawberry um raspberry bake or tart and a vivid pink at that. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. We'll keep those on. Keep the little green bits on. I quite like that. Yeah. You looking forward to having a go at this, John? Looking forward to it immensely. <laughs> really. Purists, bake or tart purists right now, they go, what are you doing? You know, but I don't care. I don't. To be honest, what the um, glasso cherries? I love a do you like? I, I like a maraschino cherry. Well, what do you put on a baked or tart? Oh yes, the one of the Mr. Mr. Kipling's. His ones. Oh, are they not traditional? No, I like these ones. Nor are these rose petals. Some no, pretty roses. I know, pretty roses outside. So let's just put. A little rose petal. I take it you can't eat those. Yeah, you can. You can eat rose petals. Absolutely, you can eat rose petals. I put them in salads, as you know. I've just got all ponzi pants there. I haven't got ponzi pants at all. Like, do you not like a little flower on your food? I've been doing it for years. Years I have. Donkey's years. On the front cover of my book, there's lavenders. Lavender flowers everywhere. I do salads with, with all the different flowers you can possibly imagine and herbs in. Give a different flavour for each mouthful. Blooming lovely. Okay, last one. Pretty little rose there, isn't it? Oh no, don't do that. Come back. All right, and finally, <sighs> finally. <laughs> Whoa, don't slide a little bit. If I put the glitter over the edge of the pastry, no one will realise that it's slightly burnt or even broken. There we go, a little bit of glitter. There we go, lovely, lovely glitter. Pretty, pretty glitter, lovely, lovely, lovely. Pretty, 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 pretty glitter. Done. I tell you what, John, that is a bake or tart. Look at that. Look at that little pretty little thing. That is so sweet looking. I'm so pleased with that. I mean, it's going to be as sweet as hell, but I tell you what. Blooming delicious. Are we going to try a little bit? Should I break into it? No, I don't. I'm just not going to. I'm going to leave it because it's pretty. Just leave it like that. I'm not allowed to eat it. Okay. I'm not to eat it at all. I've got lots of glitter now. And everything over me. Have you seen the mess I've got? <sighs> anyway. Enjoy. <laughs>